Hello and welcome back to Nerd Doc. The Atom Project on Netflix has a lot to do with time travel, and with that, we can look at the science that went into the film, as well as the plot holes that always pop up anytime you deal with different timelines. There will be a few spoilers for The Atom Project, but if you do not wish to be spoiled, you can check out our spoiler-free review linked below. Now we know this is just a fun little Netflix movie, but it's entertaining to look at some of the science these movies utilize, and there's always some fun to be had when we dive into the plot holes that time travel creates. If you're not into the science, you can check out our video covering the Easter eggs in the Atom Project, or our plot and ending explained video, both of which are linked below. If you find any plot holes we don't mention, or just want to talk about the science or the plot holes in the Atom Project, leave a comment below. There are also chapter timestamps if you'd like to jump around to different parts of the video. First we'll look at some of the science in the Atom Project, then we'll dive into the plot holes. Obviously time travel doesn't exist yet, but Einstein's theories of general and special relativity do provide suggestions of how time travel can be achieved. The Atom Project uses a variation of Einstein's theory of general relativity by using a wormhole to travel faster than the speed of light in order to go back in time. While we won't dive too deeply into the theoretical science behind wormholes, the Atom Project suggests that a particle accelerator and an advanced algorithm created by Adam's father are what led to the creation of time travel. First off, the particle accelerator at the Saurian building was small by today's standards. You need a very large ring and a particle accelerator in order to get the charged particles up to the necessary speeds. For example, the largest and most powerful particle accelerator in the world is the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. The ring there is 27 kilometers or just shy of 17 miles in length. It's clear to see that the particle accelerator in the movie is nowhere near that long. However, the magnets in the particle accelerator are relatively accurate. You would need those to help push the charged particles up to the necessary speeds. A particle accelerator is mainly used for smashing charged particles together at very high speeds. It doesn't really have much to do with time travel. At best, you could create micro black holes, which would sort of be indirectly related to time travel, since time moves slower the closer you get to black holes or any highly dense objects. The wormhole that we see the time jets create does somewhat resemble a black hole in that it's an object that warps spacetime. Not really relatable, but that's about as close as you can get. You also wouldn't have the crazy overload that happened at the end of the movie, but that did cause some interesting science issues. Maya fires a gun at Lewis, and the magnets change the course of the bullet and hit the younger Maya instead. You would need a much more powerful magnet to change the course of a bullet that drastically after it's been fired. Never mind the fact that the bullet probably should have been drawn to the magnet while it was still inside the gun. And that's assuming the gun is not made out of metal and therefore should have been pulled in immediately as well. Adam's father stored his algorithm on a diamond hard neuromorphic processor or a crystal hard drive. While we do have the tech needed to create diamond based storage drives, it doesn't really have anything to do with a neuromorphic processor. We have neuromorphic engineering, which is kind of like machine learning or a form of AI. It's not quite an apples to apples comparison, but that's kind of what the movie was going for. Lewis's algorithm was basically a self-learning program that solved the problems he was having stabilizing the wormhole. Now let's look at some of the plot holes in the movie. When older Maya from 2050 went back in time to visit younger Maya for the second time in 2018, she mentions her original conversation took place 32 years ago. Older Maya is referencing when she was the younger Maya having the conversation with herself since 32 years ago would have been 2018. The movie implies that time travel wasn't immediately created once the wormholes were stable, which means Maya didn't instantly travel back in time, and instead waited until sometime in the future to do so. Also, the younger Maya says their conversation took place two months ago, but we know it was November 18 when the conversation took place, meaning two months later would be January 2019. We also know Adam traveled back to 2018, presumably November, so this timetable is off somewhere. And while not really a plot hole, why didn't Laura show up in 2018 to help, or why wouldn't Adam go look for her? She was also in 2018 at the same time both Adams were there. Anyway, the rules of time travel in the movie basically state that changing the past rewrites the timeline. So if you go back to the past, change something, then return to the future, the changes are added to your memory once you get back to the future. Laura also claims that the events of the past always happened even if you change the past. For example, stopping the invention of time travel would cause Laura and Adam to no longer meet in the time travel program. Yet, Laura claims those memories would still remain as an echo, and those events still happened. That could have just been Laura being overly emotional at the moment, but if she means what she says, 
then one can theoretically argue that killing your younger self would not cause the older version of that person to die as well. So when Maya killed her younger self, the older version would not have disappeared. It's kind of like the Avengers Endgame time travel rules that even if you travel into the past, that's still your future, and the future you just came from becomes your past because you're still moving forward in time. The Atom Project doesn't define its time travel rules enough to really get a definitive answer one way or the other on killing one's younger self, but it's always fun to think about all the shenanigans that come with time travel. And with that, we'll wrap up this video. Once again, if you found any other plot holes or want to discuss the science in the movie, leave a comment below. For now, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with someone who loves science and Ryan Reynolds.